Hello, everyone. Welcome to Adelante with Arlene. I'm your host, Arlene. Let me inspire you. Let me inspire you. Today, I am going to speak about love. Now, come on, don't you tune off. Hear me out. I'm going to propose a question to you. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about the answer to this question. What is love? Let's get started. We all at one time or another have been asked to define this word. Many of us, when given the answer, might have had conflicting definitions when in comparison to other people. Some of us might have had similar definitions of the word love depending on our life's experiences. Our definitions of love might change um, from stage to stage in our lives, from different seasons in our lives. I've discovered this to be true because I can see now how differently I can define the word love from the time of my childhood to my young adulthood. Let's see what the Webster's Dictionary says about love. Since the 12th century, the dictionary defines love as a strong affection for one another. Hmm. I've learned that it's a lot more than that. You see, many a times we have used the word love and attributed the love to something like, I love that show. I love this dress. I love that burger. Many times I've noticed we use this word very loosely. We have also heard a lot about self-love, self-love, self-love. It's a state of appreciation of one for oneself that grows from actions that support our physical and physiological and spiritual growth. This is how it was described in Psychology Today in an article I read. Self-love. Self-love. Self-care. While self-love yeah, and self-care are natural and it is healthy to have a good appreciation for oneself, and it's good for us to take care of our mind, our body, and our soul, absolutely, and find time for ourselves. I have learned, I have learned, I have experienced, I have seen that apart from God, I can have no healthy self-love. You see, with God, he holds us accountable according to his word on when we've crossed over that line of self-love into becoming potentially and easily excessive, narcissistic, and hmm, selfish. I've been guilty of that one. You see, with God, the Spirit of God, His Holy Spirit can, well, allow us to ask Him to check our heart. You see, because the Word of God also says that the heart can be quite deceitful. So, I have discovered that I need to be careful on what I call self-love. The thing is, there's nowhere in the Bible that God says that we should have or need to have self-love. Mm -mm. And you know why? Because it's unnecessary. What do I mean? Well, the Word of God does tell us that we need to love one another and we need to first and foremost love Him. Wow, surprising, huh? Such a simple thing, but yet I found it to be true only later on when I discovered that I was quite selfish and that my self-love had turned into selfishness because of life experiences and how I had experienced love in maybe not the way God wanted me to experience it. When we have self-love, yes, filtering it through Christ, we are to take care of ourselves. We are to take care of our bodies. You see, he abides in us and we abide in him. We need to take care of ourselves. This is his temple. His body belongs to him. Shouldn't we want to take care of ourselves? Yeah, I know. Now, I even lack in that area, don't get me wrong. I'm overweight. I don't drink enough water. And there's so many other things. But 
the reason I strive to want to take care of those things, the reason I strive as I get older to want to take care of my temple, to, to take care of my mind, to be careful on what I allow to come into my life. I need to check myself to see how, how I describe love and it's never been good. The reason why is because God has to be a part of my filtering what love is. Can't love myself if I really have the wrong definition of what love is. So what is love? I believe that this is a question we will need to ask ourselves frequently. Before we react, before we act out, we need to ask ourselves. What is love? So in order to truly be happy and find what is love, unlike what we might have experienced it to be, what we might have grown up to believe it should be. You see, we need to put God before our needs. For his word shows us that we're not to do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above ourselves. It says this in Philippians 2, 3. So my problem at times, as it is for everyone, the reason we don't really at first love is that apart from God, I cannot even love, even self-love in a healthy way. Through God, I can seek my balance for life. God is love. Yes, God is love. Our goal should be to be naturally transformed into loving the way the Lord would expect us to love. You see, because when we don't love, sin stems from it. And even sin stems from this self-love. And sin stems from the lack of love of God that we have. And therefore, we cannot love others. This might not be easy for you to hear. It wasn't easy for me to understand it many years ago. And most of all, it wasn't easy for me to even pretty much do the podcast that I did before I'm doing this video, especially now because I am looking at you while I am saying this. But the reason I do have to share is his word tells me, and therefore I accept it as the truth in my life. And I hope that you accept it in yours. What does the Bible say about love and how does God love? The word we read a lot that translates as love in the Bible is agape. It's a Greek word. It's a Greek word for what is known as spiritual love. You know, when I finally started understanding a little at a time what God's love is, first and foremost, that he died for you and for me and for the forgiveness of our sins, that God doesn't condemn, that God is full of grace, that if we turn from our wicked ways, if we, if we turn from our, our ways that, that, that are sinful and continue to walk towards him, that he would forgive us, that he loves us that much. Can we really say that that's easy for you and I to forgive someone who has hurt us, someone who has done something appalling against us? Have, in our humanity, can we all say that that's easy? I can tell you for one, it is not in my natural. Absolutely not. But this kind of love that God has is the one that he wants us to have for one another. Unselfish love for one another. When I first came to the Lord, my perception of man was all the same. My example was only that of my father. Now, don't get me wrong, my father was extremely generous. He loved me dearly as a little child. But as I grew older, I started understanding that he was verbally abusive. That my father apparently did not receive the love of God in his life. That my father only knew how to love in the same way that his father had treated him. He treated me, my sister, and my mother. Therefore, my whole perception of love was so warped. Growing up, when I became a little bit more clearer of what I felt love should or shouldn't be, and I mean this without having the Lord, so I really didn't have much to kind of uh, compare it to. 
Well, my first realization that something was wrong in regards to the definition of love that has been demonstrated to me in comparison to the love of what possibly I deserved, but didn't know how to achieve. And that happened when I was in my late 20s. When I was in my late or mid 20s, I would say, I was in a long-term relationship. Someone who loved me dearly, loved me in the natural way that he knew, for he wasn't a Christian. I was not a Christian. I really admired the way that his family ate together, sat at a table together. They were very loving and caring and listened to one another. I started noticing that this was not happening at my house, that there was constant arguments, that one minute there would be a compliment, and one minute there would be a great word of, you look great, or something that would be constructive, and the next minute it would be something that would tear me down, literally. It was this back and forth thing. So when I grew older, as I grew older into maturity and adulthood, my conception of love was only that in which I had seen really from my father. It's the only one I understood. So my mom and my dad, they provided monetarily anything I needed. They were good, good providers. They took care of my sister and I. My mom was a nurturer whenever we were sick. She was there for us. My, my, my father worked extremely hard. But growing up, the example of man, right? Dad, love. I saw men in a different way. I didn't have much respect for them because of the way my father spoke to me. I tend to be feisty, didn't want anybody to control me. I thought of it as control. I didn't want anybody to, well, get too close to my heart per se. And if they did, I needed to sabotage it and mess it all up. So when I came to the Lord, I realized this was a problem as the Lord of God Almighty started illuminating these things in me as I started reading his word, as I started um, hanging out with my um, mature brothers and sisters, I realized that my God, love for me was like, what was love? What is love? I just didn't understand. I started becoming more aware that God is love, a statement that we use a lot, but I didn't understand the depth of it. I understood that there was grace and there was, but I didn't understand, could any other human being love me? the way God loved me? Well, the answer to that is no, but I can love the way Christ loves because I have to, if I read his word and I see what he's done for us and how forgiving he is and what he asks us to do as to others and how to love others and how to love our differences, then I start seeing love through his eyes. Will I make mistakes? Will you make mistakes? Yes, but God has extended grace to us the same way we need to extend it to those like my husband that he might offend me here and there and I offend him I learned to apologize I learned to seek the Lord to love him as the way the Lord would expect me to love him as a single woman I had a lot of wonderful brothers at the church single brothers my friends the first time I ever experienced unselfish love from one person to the other, without any sexual implications and pure brotherly love, was when I came to the Lord and I met my brothers. Now, don't get me wrong that every church is full of brothers who are really walking with the Lord, right? Who could show God's love. No, that, that doesn't exist. But I was blessed to have great brothers, brothers who loved me as a sister. They treated me with respect. One brother let me know one day that my concept of love was quite warped because I was being disrespectful in the manner I treated him as my friend. And this was because I saw love in one way as controlling, as somebody trying to manipulate you, as somebody trying to get something. I was reading an article recently and the writer made a statement that rang true to me. He said the spiritual love is not self-love, but rather self-sacrificing love. Wow. My brothers had learned how to sacrifice of themselves to be there for me as a sister when I needed them without expecting anything in return. But do you know who 
show the ultimate sacrificial, self-sacrificing love for you and I? That would be the Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Romans 5, 8, the word of God says, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In 1 John 4, 8, it says, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 8, love is patient. That's hard to do. I still have to practice patience with perfect strangers because even though they're not my friends, they still are people in which I need to not necessarily like, but love and be patient with. We must be kind. I've been known to be kind, but I have to be kinder. Love does not envy. Have you found yourself at times saying, oh, I wish I had that. They got it, but I don't. Envy. I've been guilty of that. Celebrate instead because you love them. Celebrate their successes instead of envy. Love does not boast. I met many people to become quite narcissistic and talk about self, their accomplishments, and you want to like celebrate with them and you want to share with them and you want to ask them questions so maybe you can succeed in whatever you're doing, but yet they're all about me, myself, and I themselves. That's arrogance. And we've all encountered rudeness, but love is not rude. It does not insist on its own way. Oh my it is not irritable or resentful. You don't have to be resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing. It doesn't rejoice on the downfall of someone else. I've been guilty. I've caught myself to say, well, and then I've had to pull back and say, that is not Christ-like. I need to love the way Christ would want me to love. Instead, love rejoices with truth. Love bears all things. You might say, how? It bears all things, believes all things. It hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. The giftings, church friends of mine, that God has given you to prophesy, to speak his message, to speak in tongues, to do all this preaching and teaching, they will cease. Knowledge. I got my degree. I went on to graduate school. Knowledge will pass away. All those things will pass away. The one thing, one thing that always will remain the same is the love of Christ. See, his self-sacrificing love for you and I, as I'm going to read right now in Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, in the natural, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believeth in him shall not perish and have eternal life. That's John 3.16. Like, what self-sacrificing love is that? You might be saying, but I can't do that. We can with Christ Jesus. I had to learn how to literally and still work on it, how to be patient. I was the girl with no patience. But when you love, you learn to be patient, even with the people that are aggravating you. Oh, my, even with strangers. You see... It clearly states in the Bible over and over again, I'm going to read a few scriptures, Romans 5, 8, that God shows his love for us. And while we were still sinners, he died for us. He died for us. Now, the Lord is not telling us to die physically for someone else, but he is asking us to die of selfishness, die of selfishness and many other negative attributes that we consider love when it really isn't. The word of God in 1 John 4, 8 says, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Many times growing up, I felt that I needed to keep my love to myself because it was very sacred. That That's kind of what we're taught to be careful um, that we don't, uh, what can I say, love too easily. But I'm not speaking about physical love. I am talking about loving another human being, but it has to be filtered through God.
In Galatians 2.20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I, but he who lives in me, Christ who lives in me and the life I live in the natural. I live by the faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. In John 3.16, we've heard it so much that we don't listen anymore. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him, him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Why is that important? Because God is love. Without God, we are just selfish human beings who love things that are excessive, who you might be kind-hearted. You might be saying to me, but I love them and they don't love me back. Well, that's sacrificial love. We're still called to love. Oh, but I do this. Well, now we're being resentful. So that's not love. I've been there. I've done that. I know I've been a me, myself, and I person. What about me? What about me? Let me tell you, when you get married, it becomes less about you and more about how much you need God to help you through that marriage so that you can love sacrificially and think of others before the husband, before yourself. Hard. It's hard. I at first did not understand that I had a hard time with it because I had been single till I was 49. So in most of my adulthood, younger adulthood, I was single. And therefore, I was more self-centered, self-thinking, self-everything. It's a natural thing and a natural process when you're by yourself. But when you get married, it is not that way anymore. And there'll be times that your needs will not come before his needs. But I assure you, it balances itself out somehow or another. My husband is sacrificial in many ways that I am not. I am sacrificial in many ways that he is not. I take care of him the way the Lord would ask me to take care of him. He is forgetful to take his vitamins. He is forgetful to, to close a cabinet door. But I am not forgetful in those areas, so I do it for him. No, I'm not enabling him. I'm loving him. Believe me, I remind him of it, but I still do it for him because I love him. He loves me enough to come home from work and cook while I'm home. Why? Because that is his talent. He's incredible as a cook. He'd rather enjoy his own food than if I would have cooked it. So I get to have that expression of his love. He works hard for us every day because he loves me. So it's a give and take. In 1 John 3, 16, it says, by this we know love that he being Jesus, laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Now, again, laying down our lives means putting them first, dying to self, considering them before your own needs, helping them. I always believe, again, that we can still love someone and still say no about helping them if they've become abusive and are using us in a manner in which they're not doing anything for themselves. And therefore, we've led them with the love of Christ to, you know, maybe get a job or, or, or um, you know, fix something in their lives. But they still are, are just constantly coming to us and wanting to, excuse me for saying this, quote unquote, suck the life out of us. We're still called to love them. We're still called to try to help them. But we are not called to enable them. It doesn't mean we don't love them when we are um, practicing, let's say, tough love. Godly love, though, is never selfish. Don't deny your brother, your sister, your friend a food when you have it. Share it with them. Godly love is never selfish. It will always think of others before self. God's love is not temporary. It's not driven on how we feel from one day to another. Because if that was the case, I wouldn't have been able to forgive so many people that God called me to forgive. The way that I learned to forgive them, and I still have more people to forgive in my life, is this way. That I too am a sinner, saved by grace. That I too am not perfect. And while some things in my own life have been changed, I don't point the finger and say, well, they should know better, because maybe they don't. And the only example that they might have is Christ in me and Christ in you. So I cannot love just according to my feelings. It is not driven by attraction or emotions. Attractions 
before I came to Christ, that was not love because attractions and emotions are not consistent in our lives. They can go up and down from one minute to the other. And we've all known that if we have had broken hearts in our lives. See, God's love is constant. It's not flippy floppy like we can be. God's love is undeserving for us. We don't deserve it. We don't. And many a times we don't appreciate it. We don't even receive it. We ignore it. See, Jesus Christ loves us. He loves us that he sacrificed his love for us. His word speaks on it, that we be forgiven for our sins. He died, he rose again, he conquered death. Through his death, we are reconciled to him. We are no longer enemies to him. Because of him, we're saved, that whoever believes in him through faith will have everlasting life. See, once we were alienated from God, but those who accepted him as Lord and Savior no longer were considered friends. So what is love? What is love? And how can we love unconditionally the way he loves us? What is love? What is many of us at one time or another had difficulty defining this word love. And some of us may be still struggling with defining the word love and we're constantly redefining it. And I understand. I too had to redefine and I still have to consider lining myself up every day with the word of God and what God's word says, what love is. Because if I wait upon my own life experiences, my own unresolved issues, then I could never love. I have had to love enough to forgive those that have hurt me when I did nothing to them. I have had to love enough to understand that I cannot point fingers at anyone without having a whole bunch point back at me from the Lord himself. I had to understand that the love of Christ is perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. We're being perfected a day at a time if we allow God to perfect us. But I have learned and I stand on his word that God and solely God is love and that love is patient that love is kind, that love does not envy. I had to learn that while I don't agree with people's political stances, I am still called to love them even though I don't like them. I am to understand that although some people rightly deserve the repercussions of their activities or whatever they have done that has been appalling, hurtful, and wicked, I understand that. I don't mean they're my friends. I don't mean I invite them over the house, but I'm still not called to hate. I am still too called to love, not the sin, not what somebody's done, but to still walk in God's love, which means I would have to pray even for the enemies that I do not like. The answer to what is love is God is love. And apart from God, we can't do anything. Then nothing that would ever describe what love should or should not be. We would never know. We have no scale to measure without God's love. We take it for granted. So today I will close with this. When I started, I asked the question, what is love? And the only answer I can give you is God is love. Thank you for tuning in to Adelante with Arlene. I hope that anything I said would touch your heart. That you would stop seeing love through the eyes of the world, through the media, through the eyes of your parents, but instead see love the way God intended love to be. It's never too late, my brother and sister. It's never too late. I have loved in the way of the world and lost. I have loved and been hurt, betrayed just like many of us. I have loved those that I felt were undeserving of my love, but I didn't love myself in Christ Jesus sufficient to not allow myself to be put in those circumstances. So today I assure you that if you grab a hold of God's love, it will never, ever fail you. Please consider subscribing. And I thank you so much that you have found these videos to be helpful to you. I have also a podcast. You will see that information on the bottom of the screen, or you can find it in the description box. 
In the description box, you will see other things, other links for other things I have, including apparel. Yes, I sell t-shirts and accessories and more. Again, thank you for tuning in to Adelante with Arlene. This I say at every end of a video. Sigue adelante, which means keep moving forward. Until next time.